Today's topic is the circulatory system and the tasks that animals have to accomplish by using it. Um, there are some organisms that don't have a cir circulatory system, and we'll get into how they accomplish those same tasks without one. Your target um, reads the basic function, how different animals accomplish it, the different types of circulatory systems. Um, this, these are, again, these are listed on your notes, and I'll have this up there um, at the end of the notes as well. Um, the basic function is transportation and distribution. So all these things, oxygen, nutrients, waste products, they need to be moved around the body and delivered to different places. So it's a, it's a delivery system. Um, where does this stuff need to go? Um, it needs to go your cells. Now you've got a hundred trillion cells, so that's a pretty extensive delivery uh, system that your body has. And then so we'll look at some, some images here in a little bit. Um, but literally every single cell in your body uh, has a blood vessel close by it. It does other things as well. Um, and you've got white blood cells in your blood that fight infections. Uh, it removes waste, CO2. We've talked about the, how it delivers ammonia to the liver. Um, and it does regulate body temperature. So when you are hot, uh, your blood flow is directed towards your skin uh, so that it can radiate some of that heat and cool you down. When you're cold, um, blood flow is directed towards the core of your body um, to keep the core of your body warm, which is why your, uh, your kind of your extremities get cold first. It's because your body's not delivering blood there. So what that network looks like is here. Okay, so in a child, uh, approximately 60,000 miles of blood vessels, if you took them all and put them end to end. In an adult, that's 100,000. So you can see in here um, the heart, which is right up in here. Okay, and then we got a huge aorta right there, and then it branches into the carotid arteries and goes up to your brain. So that is a, a, uh, a huge blood vessel right there. Another picture of a full uh, adult with all just blood vessels, nothing else there. There's, uh, it's, it's a lot. Um, but let's start with something more simple. Okay, the simple organisms that don't actually have a circulatory system have to use diffusion. So this is a little picture of a little thing called a hydra, a little organism that lives in the uh, fresh water, and it's tiny. It might only be, a, you know, half an inch, quarter of an inch tall. And But that needs oxygen. It needs to get rid of carbon dioxide. It needs to get rid of other wastes. Uh, and, and it does that via diffusion. And how that works is it's simple enough... Um, that it doesn't have a whole lot of materials to do. So if you look at the image here, we've got carbon dioxide uh, can come in, in and out of there, most likely out, okay, by diffusion, okay, and you and oxygen is going in by di, you know diffusion as well, and that's because there is only two cell layers, an inner layer and an outer layer, and so this organism can get all it needs by simple diffusion. Um, other organisms that are uh, that do not have a circulatory system, sea stars do not have a circulatory system, and this little thing called the planaria has no circulatory system either. Okay, and that is because they are simple and they have few cell layers. Okay, and so diffusion works just fine for these things and they do not need um, a circulatory system because every cell in their body is in close contact with their environment. Okay? Now, with animals with circulatory systems, there are a couple different types. Uh, the first one is called an open circulatory system, and that is where blood is not always in a blood vessel. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. If you look at this image here, this is the heart, and as the blood gets collected into the heart, it'll get pumped out here, and then really just comes out of these little tubes right here, and um, this is the body over here. It just, it just pours blood out into the body, and that delivers the nutrients and gets rid of the waste, and then the heart collects it again, and then it pumps it again. But in this area, there's the blood leaves blood vessels. Okay, and you can see it down here. The blood vessel just ends right here. So blood's just going to come out of there. Blood's just going to come out of there. Blood's going to come out of there, and just kind of swish around in the body of these things and then get collected by the hearts and pumped back out again. This fountain is just an analogy of an open circulatory system. Okay, the fountain, the water pours over it, gets collected by a pump, pumped back out to the top, 
comes back down, pump back out to the top, and the same thing. Okay, so that is an open circulatory system. Um, organisms that have an open circulatory system, insects, spiders, snails, clams, uh, organisms that are uh, fairly simple. Uh, some can be aquatic, some can be terrestrial. Um, but that's an open circulatory system. There is a different type called a closed circulatory system. Examples there, earthworm, octopus, human, frog. And that is where the blood is entirely uh, within a blood vessel. Okay, it creates, it creates higher blood pressure. Um, okay, higher blood pressure. It's more efficient. So the heart comes, blood pumps out, and it comes through things like, uh, these things are called little capillaries, little tiny blood vessels where gas exchange can occur and then stays in that blood vessel and keeps right around going. Um, so higher blood pressure, a little more efficient, um, and that can support a little more complexity with organisms. But again, in a closed circulatory system, blood is always in a blood vessel. Um, if your circulatory system delivers oxygen and food to all your cells, but the blood doesn't come out of blood vessels, then how does the oxygen and food actually get from the blood to your cells? Okay, because it's a it doesn't really make sense. So the picture here is of a capillary bed. Okay, and as the blood comes in over here, okay, we'll start over here on this side. Blood's coming in. This is a little tiny capillary. It's a little small blood vessel. Each of those little circles is a red blood cell carrying oxygen. And each of these things in here, those are um, individual cells. And so as this blood flow comes in here, oxygen diffuses out okay and feeds all these cells okay so oxygen is coming in there and feeding these cells well, at the same time um, these cells are getting rid of and diffusing into the blood co2 so um, all these little and there's just millions of these little capillary beds all over your body um, but because this is such a thin wall right here a really thin capillary wall oxygen can just diffuse um, right in and out of there and right in through the cell membrane of of each of those cells okay so because the the cell membranes and the and the walls of your um, capillaries are so thin water oxygen carbon dioxide all those things can diffuse right in and out of them so the blood cells don't actually leave the blood it's just the oxygen and co2 okay um, single loop versus double loop a single loop um, circulatory system is where there is a heart and if we start right down here in the atrium okay so blood comes in and it, i mean blood's in there and it gets pumped through the ventricle and it goes right up here to the gills and in the gill capillaries the blood pressure goes way down and slows way down it picks up oxygen here so o2 goes in co2 goes out and then it starts to circulate to the rest of the body okay and then goes he just keeps going right around it's one single loop but because it has to slow down here blood slow 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 it makes its way around fairly slowly okay and so they run out of energy pretty quick if you've ever gone fishing and caught a fish it fights like crazy and then sometimes it just then that's it it's over that's run out of energy partly because of its circulatory system the double loop is a uh a heart that has two sides sorry about the you know drawing there but um, so one side of the heart this side here pumps blood to the body and then it goes through the capillaries and slows down and um, comes back to the heart then this side of the heart pumps it to the lungs and then it comes back to the heart and then goes to the body and then back to the heart and then the lungs and then back to the heart and then to the body and then back to the heart and then to the lungs and then back to the heart and then to the body and then back to the heart and then to the lungs and then back to the heart and then to the body and then back to the heart and then to the lungs and then back to the heart and then to the body and then back to the heart and then to the lungs and then back to the heart and then to the body and then back to the heart <sighs> okay um so it's a little more efficient because it goes and get oxygen then it gets an extra boost uh, and then is able to go around to the rest of the body okay I think that ought to do it. Again, here is your uh, target, the things that we've gone through uh, for open versus closed circulatory system, single loop versus double loop circulation, and how organisms um, that don't have a, cir a circulatory system accomplish those same tasks.